Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to incredible day four of the Morris Cirillo declaring war on the Devil's War School of Ministry. I want to congratulate you for connecting on the podcast today. I want to thank you for joining us on Facebook, on YouTube. You and I are a part of God's end time plan, and we are discovering God did not plan one defeat for us. And I thank God, Don, I thank God, Mark, for the voice of Morris Cirillo, which is a voice that reminds us that God has not planned any defeats for us. And he's not just preaching those words, but we watched him for almost a hundred combined years between the three of us live every single word that he's bringing to us in this school of ministry. Yes, one of the greatest gifts of his life to the church was not so much to promote the baptism in the Holy Spirit as to reveal from the throne of God what is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And today he's going to take us deeper. And I want to examine myself according to 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Not just am I in the faith with my salvation, but am I really laying hold on God's concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this equipment mm. for our warfare? I mean, and I would like just to come back to what we have seen yesterday. Isn't it great that uh, if we want to win the war, we need to know the strategy of our enemy and how God has used the life of Dr. Serlo to bring us this amazing teaching Praise and give us and give us the revelation and the knowledge of the strategy of the devil. And if we know the strategy of our enemy, for sure, we're going to win. Amen. And if you missed yesterday's message, I want to encourage you to go back, check it out. The four mistakes that most Christians make in spiritual warfare, one of the pivotal messages of this school of ministry. And as Don was saying, today we're going to go right into one of the greatest illustrated sermons that I have ever seen Brother Srillo minister. You are going to have a breakthrough. Somebody say, the word breakthrough today. You're going to have a breakthrough in understanding this incredible power that we have. I love when Brother Strollo would remind us, we don't have a twin spirit or a lookalike spirit, but we have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I tell you what, if you just didn't get a hold of that today, if I can get a hold of that today and we can tap in to that power, we will win 100% of every battle that we ever face 100% of the time because we have 100% of the same power that Jesus had. And so if you are ready, and I want to encourage you like I do every day, share this stream, share this message with somebody you know that wants God to do something for them that he's never done before. If you're ready, I want you to join us here in this incredible Morris Cirillo International Legacy Center Theater in welcoming once again our founder, God's apostle and prophet to the nations. Would you join us in welcoming God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo? Luke, the third chapter. John the Baptist, being mightily used of God, the forerunner of our Lord, is ministering in the waters of baptism. 21st verse. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape 
like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Luke 4, 1 and 2. Now I want to ask you a question before we read this. <clears throat> Do you think for one moment, one minute, that God would send his only son to face Satan face an enemy without first equipping him and giving him the necessary weapons to destroy Satan. What does John 4 tell us? Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of of him that sent me. The God we serve is a God of purpose. God sent Jesus here for a purpose. He said, my meat, which is interpreted purpose, my purpose is to do the will of him that sent me. 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. What would you think of a God who knew the strength of the enemy's power? and sent his son to combat the strength of that enemy. You say, how did God know the strength of the enemy? He knew his enemy, Satan, whose name was Lucifer, who was the brightest of all the angels, who led a revolt in the heavenlies. One third of all the angelic beings followed him in a revolution against God. He turned the spirit and will of one third of all the heavenly hosts against their creator. Did God not know the strength of the enemy's power? Then what would you think of a God who would send his son to combat that enemy, to destroy him and to defeat him without giving him the necessary equipment, equipment without giving him the necessary weapon to come against that enemy and meet that power and have the ability to destroy him? Luke 4, 1 and 2, listen to it. Then Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan. <laughs> After that experience, now, you're probably reading it from your King James. I'm reading it to you from the original Greek, which gives you a little bit more of the meaning. The oh, dove, look up here, comes upon Jesus. The sign of the Holy Spirit. Not only is he baptized in water, but he is baptized with the blessed third person of the Trinity. The Holy Ghost comes and engulfs your master and mine. And the next thing we see as Jesus is walking into the wilderness to begin his 40 days of fasting and prayer 
in preparation for his ministry. The Bible says as he comes from the Jordan, he is full of and in complete control by the Holy Ghost. If God does not give to the Pentecostal church, if God does not give to the charismatic church, if God does not give to us a true understanding of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we will never come into this experience that Jesus had. I'd like to tell you today, as a servant of God, that there is no difference between the Holy Spirit that engulfed Jesus and controlled Jesus and worked through Jesus to perform miracles, the casting out of devils, the healing of the sick. There is no difference between that Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit that God wants you and I to have an experience with. There is no difference. It is the same Holy Spirit. Notice the scripture. He was full of and under the total control God gave to us and put this deep in your spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit for a purpose. He told Peter, you're not ready. He said, you've got to go to Jerusalem and you sit there, Peter. And you wait, and you get in that upper room, something's going to happen to you. And when Peter walked out of that upper room, he was not the same. Now listen. He walked by that person sitting at that temple many times. But this time, he had an experience. And he said to that man, such as I have, My God. Shh. Where are the such as I have today? We talk about the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit on a level that is way down here. Oh, my wife got the baptism last week and I don't know why God won't give me the baptism. We got spiritual competition going for somebody to get the baptism. See, the first thing is we don't understand what the baptism is. Well, my wife speaks in tongues.
tongues and I didn't know I can't speak in tongues. I don't know why God won't let me speak in tongues. Now, first of all, you're going to get very mad at me because the manifestation of speaking in tongues is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, just a moment. I'm not looking, listen carefully. I'm not looking for you to agree with me. I just want you to hear the Holy Spirit today. There's a difference in receiving the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That somewhere in this experience comes this beautiful gift of speaking in other tongues. Now, can a person be filled with the Spirit and not speak in tongues? Very possible. Can a person speak in tongues and not be baptized? Very possible. You look at people who want to receive what has traditionally been called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They come to church, They've been living lives like this, brother. You know what I'm talking about. One day they're up on the top, then the next day they're down here, someday they're in between here, and then one day they're back up here, then they're down, then they're up. You don't know where they are. That's, that's the case with most Christians, including you. You don't have to say amen, just say ouch. Now, come on, we're talking about serious stuff here. Now, is it any wonder that these people who are getting to can't cast out devils? Is it any wonder, brother, that these people that are getting the bloop, 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 bloop don't have the P-O-W-E-R? So I don't want you to think I'm up here just playing a little game up here to make you feel good. This is serious. Amen. We're talking about the same cow. Amen. The same Holy Ghost. Amen. The same experience. Amen. That happened to our Lord. So you'll understand what we're talking about here this morning. Take a look at this. Let's say that this Glass is your life, a vessel, because that's what it is. It's a vessel. How many of you know our lives are vessels? <clears throat> now, let's say that this water typifies the Holy Spirit. Now, here's our life. Here's the Holy Spirit. Here's our vessel. Every true child of God, when they are born again, don't let anybody tell you any different. You cannot be born again without the Spirit of God. But when you are born again, you have a whole vessel and a whole life and you're born again by the Spirit, but you're just a baby. Come on, how many of you know you're stronger today than you were 20 years ago when you first got saved? 
If you're not, then there's something wrong with you. Amen. How many of you have how many of you have grown spiritually since you've been born again? Amen. All right. Now, but when you were born again, you were like this. See? You had the spirit. Somebody said, can you have the spirit of God by measure? Of course you can. You say, how do you get more of the measure of the spirit? The more you yield your life. Amen. The more you come into spiritual understanding. The more you grow, that's how you get more. Now, I've grown in the spirit, but I still am not full, am I? Come on. The prayer language of the Holy Spirit, the speaking in other tongues, is part of my spiritual growth. It's part of the manifestation that the Spirit is in me. So I receive the gift of the prayer language. I receive even the use of the manifestation of the gifts of healing, faith, interpretation, prophecy. See, God uses me, uses you in the gifts of the Spirit. The more you yield your life, the more you receive. The more you yield, the more God uses you. The more you yield, the more the Holy Spirit takes over. Jesus didn't go through this process because he was 100% totally obedient. Come on, do you understand? Once you become 100% total obedient, do you know that's what the scripture says? That's why God could not leave Jesus in the grave after he died on the cross and was buried in the grave. It is written that because he was obedient even unto the death of the cross, God was forced to raise him from the dead. Now, now watch what happens. Watch what happens. The question, you see, are the questions being answered? Come on, come on, are the questions being answered? Come on, are the questions in your heart being answered? All right, come on, now, you got the prayer language down here. Can somebody have the prayer language and still not be baptized? Of course. Can somebody have the spirit by measure? Of course. Can somebody have the prayer language of the Holy Spirit and not be full of the Holy Spirit? Of course! That's why you got a lot of people, brother, talking in tongues and living lives that don't manifest the fullness of the Spirit. Come on! Now, either... Either we're going to know this thing by the fruits we produce or we're going to be blind leaders of the blind and just have a lot of bunch of spiritual formulas that really aren't productive. Am I talking to myself here? Am I talking to myself? All right, now, tell me, to the best of my ability now, tell me, is that vessel full? Oh, yes, it is. 
best of my ability. If I get any more water in there, brother, it's going to spill over. That's full. That's full. That's full. Now, the question is, can a vessel be full of the Holy Spirit and not baptized? Of course. Why, Brother Sula? Because baptism is not being full. The word baptism means to have the spirit without measure. You can't see it. It's full of and controlled. I know it won't. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Draw yourself that mental picture this morning, Lord. Let my vessel be like this. Full of control by 100% obedient. Oh, God. Go ahead, put your hands. Jesus. Jesus. Right where you're sitting, go ahead and talk to him. Shut yourself in. Shut yourself in. Shut yourself in.
feel the presence and the anointing of God upon us today in a very, very special way. You and I are that glass that literally God the Father is submerging into that same anointing that Jesus Christ of Nazareth walked about and doing good because God was with him. The same power is upon your life today. And Father, we thank you for the word of your prophet reminding us who we really are and whose we really are. Lord, we thank you that you have not asked us to face this battle, to declare this war against the devil's war in our strength or in our name, but you have given us power. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And I declare to you, my brother, my sister, when we become that glass and we submerge ourselves and we submit ourselves to God, the Bible says, then we'll resist the devil and he has no choice but to flee from us. And so Lord, we thank you for your servant, Morris Cirillo today for reminding us, imparting to us that we have that power, that same anointing, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And whether you speak in the prayer language or not, you are a candidate for that power. And we're going to pray for you today. If you have not received the prayer language of the Holy Spirit, I feel there's a great anointing upon you right now, wherever you are. You know what, I see somebody right now and your hands are literally shaking under the presence of God. I want to encourage you just to go ahead, lift those hands right now, whether they're shaking or not. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your hand and I want you just to go ahead and put it on the side of your mouth because right now in the name of Jesus, there is a fire that is being released into your tongue. And I encourage you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you just go ahead and begin to open your mouth and you begin to speak the one word, the two words, the three words that are not your English words or your native words. And those of you that have the prayer language, I want you to use that language right now. In takabo rabase ke radeshte ke levara, mantre voste patre veke alavandre voste papa, shale ve krediste kar de gondro bosa kalabasata. That is the power. That is the presence. There is somebody. There's just a peace that is just overwhelming your heart, overwhelming your mind. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. 
Use the phone number that's on the screen. There's a prayer minister that is ready to agree with you in prayer, 1-800-514-1864, or use the comment section, or email us and let us know what God is doing for you. Let us know how we can pray for you. Don, what a baptism we have come under today. Yes, we're getting all submerged, yes. completely submerged in that water, hallelujah. There, we're in it now, we're all the way submerged like that glass, hallelujah. And we thank you that even Paul said that his tongues could be a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal if they didn't have love. Yeah. But there's a baptism of love that is accompanying this prayer, this great prayer that Craig just prayed. And I can feel, I can feel vicariously from you suffering and physical pain disappearing. It's not just shaking or trembling, but it's the power of God. It's not what Jesus just went to the Jordan with, went into the wilderness with from the Jordan, but who he returned into Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In the power of the Spirit, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The prayer language is a vehicle to enter more deeply. It's not to act like we, we've got it made. We've got it made in the, in the kingdom. But it's a device for the prayer that that which we cannot express with our intellect comes forth from the Spirit of God. And tears away, tears away the works of the devil like gossamer threads and the light of God shines into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the Lord is reminding me in 1996 at the Spiritual Warfare School of Ministry in Chicago, Dr. Segelo took us into a deep time of prayer, and I had an experience, Greg, Don, that was the baptism of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I experienced for the very first time the glory of the Lord, and I believe that today it is available for you now, the very same anointing, the very same glory, Barra. You just need to yield. You just need to do as Dr. Sabino says, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Manto rekekele God is giving you your experience in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah, Master. Hallelujah, Master. You know, Mark, you know, Don, what I love about a moment like this is it reminds me of a meeting we would be in with Brother Cirillo and the Holy Spirit would just have his way. This school of ministry is a school with a difference. This is a school you're going to find out tomorrow that is based around certain words, and one of those words is experience. And I trust that you are having an experience, even as unusual as it may be, you are on a podcast right now, you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, and you're feeling a presence, you're feeling a power, you're feeling a nudging, you're feeling a lifting, and this is what the Lord is saying to me. The Lord is saying that He is lifting fear, he is lifting pressure, he is lifting failure off of your mind and off of your life, and he's lifting this feeling that it is all up to you. Brother Trillo reminded us, we're going to hear it tomorrow, he reminded us that God is not depending on anything that we possess. God is depending on what you will let him make of you, and I just want to congratulate you because you are opening your life through this podcast, through this Facebook, through this YouTube, and saying, God, I submit myself to you. I resist the devil. And because you are true, and every man is a liar, the devil must flee from me. I want you to know your nightmares are ceasing. I want you to know those struggles that you have had for many years they're being broken off of your life and a new strength, a new anointing is coming. Just before we close today, Mark, you mentioned the 1996 Chicago Spiritual Warfare Conference. 
What an incredible opportunity. Now we only have a few more of these that are available. They have been picking these up all over the world. It's an amazing opportunity. All four hours of Brother Cirillo's teaching, I really believe this is the greatest teaching I have heard Brother Cirillo bring in over 30 years on the subject of waging and winning spiritual warfare. Both DVDs, this is normally a $40 value for $10. If you haven't got them yet, please make a little investment in waging and winning your spiritual warfare over your family, over your finances, your ministry, your future. I promise you, you will never be the same again. Make sure you take advantage of the books. You can know how to defeat Satan. You could download it right now. It's 265 pages, incredible teaching. This is the textbook for declaring war on the devil's war. You can use the link, download it right now. Well, on behalf of Don and Mark, guys, this has been incredible. I tell you what, I feel the presence of God. I feel like we're in Chicago in 1996 with Brother Cirillo. You know, even though we know Brother Cirillo is in the presence of the Lord, I also know something else. His spirit and his anointing and his mantle is very much alive. And I know you're feeling that today too. And I know that's why so many of you are staying connected. Do you know that just yesterday, I checked with Phyllis, the Dean of the School of Ministry, in 24 hours, 1,000 new students registered for the School of Ministry. We wanna welcome all of the new uh, students. We just are so excited that you are a part of this School of Ministry. And I wanna encourage you to stick with us. Tomorrow will be day five, and then we'll have day six, and then the closing day seven will be an incredible impartation, anointing service. Brother Thriller will be leading us in the final message and then we're going to take you into the next school of ministry. We're gonna go through all 10 of them. You're gonna have an opportunity to get your certificate of completion and join thousands of incredible men and women from now over 150 nations that are participating virtually and on the podcast in this school of ministry. And then we look forward to welcoming you to this incredible, magnificent Legacy Center where we'll be able to honor you, recognize you, celebrate you. We just can't wait to see what God is going to do. I say to so many people, stay connected because your best is yet to come. And on behalf of our team, I declare, stay connected. Your best is yet to come. We'll see you next time live from Legacy.